You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how a metal detector works and how you can make your very own. Metal detectors work off of a property called inductance. What inductance basically is, is that an electrical current is slowed down due to the fact of an opposing magnetic field. An example of this is when we tried our experiment with induction heating. In that video, I demonstrate the principle that a magnetic field had on metal. Specifically in that case, the magnetic fields created by the electricity running through the coil were creating eddy currents inside the metal near it, and these eddy currents were causing the metal to heat up. Not only that, but a transformer like this relies on inductance. Basically, the inductance value changes based on the material that's inside of it. So in this case, we have metal, which would be a higher inductance than something like air, for instance. And so, going back to a metal detector, if we have a coil of wire and it goes near metal, that metal is going to change the inductance value of that coil, and thus that change in the inductance can tell us that we're near metal. And so here's the circuit that we're going to be using. Now the primary component in this, and probably one of my favorite chips, is the 555 timer. It should look relatively like this. Now as you can see, the chip itself has 8 pins. Now the numbers that I've drawn next to these wires coming out of the 555 timer are going to be the pin that it's connected to. And in case you didn't know, the pin configuration for the 555 timer goes like this. As you can see, there's a little divot in the top of the chip. So from the top left hand corner, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now in case you're wondering, there are actually many ways to do it without this 555 timer chip. Like for instance, I made this a while back using a different kind of chip. Although this gives us a little bit better of a signal, it's quite a bit more complicated than the 555 timer version. And so now we can go ahead and build this circuit out onto the spreadboard. I'm going to start by inserting our 555 timer chip in between these two rails. Now I'm going to connect pin 1 to this negative rail, and pin 6 is going to be connected to pin 2. Now from pin 2, I'm going to connect up this 2.2 microfarad capacitor. As you can see, one side of the capacitor has these negative symbols on it. And so you're going to want to make sure you connect up the positive side and the negative side facing correctly. And so I'm going to have the positive side connected to pin 2 and the negative side connected to the negative rail. Now I'm going to have this wire going from pin 8 to pin 4, and then another wire going from pin 4 to the positive rail. Now I'm going to take this 47,000 ohm resistor, and if you need to find out which resistor is a 47,000 ohm one, you can use the color code that you can see printed on the resistor. But anyways, I'm going to insert that between pin 2 and pin 3. Since I need to connect up more things to pin 3, I'm going to take this wire and put it to another rail down here. And then I'm also going to take this wire connected up to pin 2 and bring it down here as well. Since later on we're going to need to connect up this coil and this capacitor to pin 3, putting these two rails down here should make that easier. Also, I'm going to take this 10 microfarad capacitor and connect the positive end up to that pin 3 rail. Now I'm using a decently big 8 ohm speaker, however if you want you can get away with using a smaller one as well. And now I'm going to connect up one end of that speaker to the other end of that 10 microfarad capacitor, and the other end of that speaker is going to go to our negative rail. Now according to this circuit, we should have everything done except for this coil and capacitor. So let's go ahead and connect up power to it to verify that it'll make a sound. And so to power it, I'm going to be using this DC power supply that I have set to 9 volts. If you don't have a power supply like this, you can easily just use a 9 volt battery as well. And so from the power supply, I'm going to connect up the positive to the positive rail, and the negative to the negative rail. And as you can hear, our speaker is starting to click. Now it's clicking like this because it's at an extremely low frequency. If you want it to be buzzing at a higher frequency, you can change out this capacitor here. Watch when I trade out that 2.2 microfarad capacitor for one that's only 1 microfarad. As you can hear, it's clicking much faster now. And when I take up the capacitor, since it still technically has a very low capacitance between those two points, it'll be very high pitch. Okay, so I have it back to that 2.2 microfarad capacitor now. So now all that we need to do to turn this frequency generator into a metal detector is create this coil. To make the coil, I'm going to be using this 26 gauge magnet wire. Magnet wire is basically just copper wire with a thin enamel coating over it so that it doesn't conduct with itself. Now although this magnet wire is a gauge of 26, you could use higher gauges. Since I don't have any of that thinner wire though, I'm just going to be using this. And so to do this, I'm just going to be using the circular capacitor I have as a form. And so I'm going to leave a little bit of wire here on the end so that I can attach it back up, and then I'm just going to do turns like this. Ideally, I'm going to only have the coil about the thickness of these tweezers here. Anyways, I'm going to cut where I've already wound about 200 turns of this magnet wire onto this. And so here I have the completed coil. Now since, as I was saying earlier, this magnet wire has an insulative coating, you're going to need to get sandpaper like this to sand off that coating. And when you do, you should be able to tell a visible difference between the bare copper and the red enameled wire. And now with that all sanded off, let's use this device here to check the inductance of the coil. As you can see, the inductance is about 1.96 microhenries, and the resistance is about 4.5 ohms. And so now going back to our circuit, let's connect it all up. So to pin 2, I'm going to insert this 2.2 microfarad capacitor, and then I'm going to connect the coil we wound to one end of that capacitor, and the other end is going to be connected back up to pin 3. And so now I have it turned back on, you can hear that high pitch kind of annoying noise. Again, we can mess with that high pitch frequency if you want it to be lower by changing these two capacitors here. However, the high frequency is going to be easier to distinguish if there's metal nearby. And so here what happens when I bring this roll of aluminum tape near it. 
as you can hear the frequency changes. And as I bring the screwdriver near it, the same thing happens. You can hear the screwdriver actually makes the frequency get lower. And now I took out this coil from the inside of an old computer monitor. And so now I have this coil connected up in the place of the old one. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it does any better. Now the coil shape being in this configuration doesn't actually matter. In fact, those stick type metal detectors actually has the coil wound in an oval shape. And so if you want it to be more sensitive, you simply need to get more inductance. Now if you don't have one of those meters, you can also calculate the inductance using a formula. This formula is only applicable using air core inductors. And to be honest, this one only works well with a circular inductor like the one that we've been using. Anyways, this formula is called Wheeler's formula. A is going to be equal to the measurement from the center of the circle to the outer diameter. Mu R is going to be equal to the inside radius. B is going to be equal to the width of the coil, so basically this edge here. And C is going to be equal to the height of the coil. So basically C is going to be equal to this small edge here. And when you plug all these in, it should give you something in micro henrys. And that inductance value should be very close to the value of your air core inductor. Okay, and now rather than a speaker, I have it connected up to my oscilloscope. You can see that we're actually getting a very strange looking wave pattern there. However, watch what happens to it when I bring metal near the coil. As you can see, as with the aluminum, the frequency is getting higher. Now when I bring the small piece of ferrite near it, watch what happens to the frequency. You can see that it does get distinctly lower. Now the range with this specific circuit here is only about 3 inches, so it could actually be useful as one of those metal detectors where you try to see if anyone has metal on them. However, if you intend to be finding things in the dirt with this coil at least, it's practically useless for that. So its real purpose is really just to teach how metal detectors work. So now hopefully you know how metal detectors work and how you can build a very simple one. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see on this channel, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. If you'd like to see my weekly science experiments, go ahead and hit the subscribe button buttons, they will show up in your subscription newsfeed. So please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to turn a microwave into a magnetron gun.